Question says, is it authentic in reading Surah Yasin every Thursday night? We say no. And we say, as Imam Ahmed ibn Hanbal ta'ala stated, that there is no authentic hadith on the virtue of Surah Yasin. Um, and it's quite strange. I asked one of my teachers about this, one of my mashaykh here in Medina, why Surah Yasin so special and so particular to so many Muslims. We know that there are fabricated hadith or many surahs in the Quran. But for some strange reason, Muslims have a very special concern with Surah Yasin and with fabricating hadith and weak hadith, reading Yasin over the dead, and so on and so forth. So we say that it is not authentic to read Surah Yasin on Thursday night or Friday night or Saturday night. Now, a person may laugh and he may look at this question as stupid or funny or peculiar or whatever the case may be. We say no. We say you will be shocked, especially when there are Muslims who um, are uh, children of uh, immigrants, okay, or as some people say, foreigners, Muslims who come from other countries, Muslims who came from uh, Pakistan, India, Bangladesh, Muslims who come from Palestine, all right, Muslims who come from Nigeria, Mali, Guinea, all right, um, or any other place from the predominantly inhabited lands of Muslims. We say that uh, there are many, many widespread bid'a, widespread innovations in these lands. And unfortunately, when many of these Muslims came to America seeking a better life, seeking a better uh, economic situation, seeking better education, seeking a, you know, freedom, whatever the case may be, we don't get into no political issues right now. Uh, many of these Muslims, they brought those innovations with them. They brought those bid'a with them to America. And uh, when they are quote-unquote original Americans, or Americans whose family members are very old in America, whether they're black uh, Americans, whether they're white Americans, or even whether they're second and third generation from Latino or Hispanic backgrounds, Puerto Rico, Mexico, Colombia, Dominican Republic, so on and so forth, uh, or even uh, of the Caribbean, whether it's Guyana or, or, or Haiti and so on and so forth, Jamaica, and the list goes on. Uh, we say that when many of these people accepted Islam, they uh, fell into these customs, these practices, and these cultural issues of many of these Muslims. For example, well, uh, the average American Muslim, maybe not so much as now, but some years back before some things changed, you know, you'll find a, uh, a black Muslim would accept Islam, and he'll go to the masjid, and not only will he change his life, but he change his name, but his whole entire culture changes. And he dresses, and he eats, and talks, and walks like someone from Pakistan. Okay, do you'll, you'll find this? Uh, he doesn't eat, for example, he doesn't eat soul food anymore. And he's just curry chicken, for example. All right, or dal, or masala, whatever the case may be. Uh, and this is his culture changes. And also, he doesn't just accept Islam based off of the Quran and Sunnah, but then he starts practicing other types of innovations and saying this dua and reading this surah like this and going out for 40 days like that. And he has to do this. You have to wear a turban that looks like this and this length. And you, you have to wear a kameez, a shawa kameez. Because those immigrants from Pakistan, they brought that with them to America. So he accepts Islam and he accepts their teachings of Islam. So therefore, many of these innovations that came from those far lands in the East were brought to America. So you will be shocked about the different amount of weak hadiths, uh, fabricated, false, bogus hadith that are very widespread among many people in America, let alone the UK. That's a whole different issue. Our brothers and sisters in the United Kingdom, which things are even worse there. Things are even worse there with regards to these uh, innovations and these practices that are based off of these weak hadith. Khayyan, inshallah. Um, I'll leave you with one thing, and that is... Innovations and weak hadith go like white on rice. They go hand in hand. And in uh, not every time, but m most of the cases, you'll find a weak hadith is dealing with an innovative practice. And an innovative practice dealing with a weak hadith. And this is from the harms of weak hadith. And this is from the harms of the students of hadith and hadith disciples to keep silent and not to talk and not to teach and not to spread knowledge. And we've said this so many times, so many lectures we've been to, so many different masjids, that there are Muslims who walk up to you and Wallahi al-Azim, I swear by Allah, they'll ask you certain questions, you give them the answer, they'll start crying. They'll literally start crying 
the brother will just start breaking down and he'll hug you. Jazakallah khair, Sheikh. I never knew this. I was Muslim for 40 years. My parents came from India, from Pakistan. They do this every single night. You explain to me, I never knew. And it will change his life. All right? Men and women, you'll change their lives by Allah's permission. So the concept of learning the sunnah, the authentic sunnah, passing on the authentic sunnah, and teaching it to Muslims, it is no doubt from the most obligatory things and the most important things. And Allah Azza wa Jal says, وَمَنْ أَحْسَنَ قَوْلًا مِمَّنْ دَعَيْ لَلَّهِ وَعَمِنَ صَالِحًا وَقَالَ إِنَّنِي مِنَ الْمُسْلِمِينَ Allah says, and who is better? Who is more virtuous? What person can say something that is better than to say, than those who call to Allah, invite to Allah, and do perform righteous deeds, and he says, I am from the Muslims. That's what he says. He says, what? I'm from the Muslims. Nothing else. He says, I'm a Muslim. So therefore, this concept of, of, of combating these weak hadith, these bogus hadith, you'll be shocked. You sit down and you talk with some Muslims, whether they're foreigners or whether they're not foreigners, you would be shocked about some of these uh, narrations that have become widespread. And this is all from the harms of the people who have knowledge, not spreading knowledge. And it goes to show you, those who say, don't go to this masjid, don't teach in this masjid, don't speak to these people. These people, we don't say that they're ignorant. But we say that they are evil. They are evil. I have no doubt in my heart, full conviction, they are evil people. And they do not want or intend good for Islam and the Muslims. Allah knows best who placed them, what placed them, where they came from. Only Allah knows who puts the battery in their backs and who financially funds these people to say this. Don't go to this masjid. Don't teach in this conference. Don't go there. Okay, khair, inshallah. You're right. We won't go to the masjid. We won't teach. We'll just let them go to the hellfire. We see them making innovations, ignorance, sin. Hey, they're people of innovation. I don't speak with them. I don't talk with them. I don't go with them. If they want to know the truth, they'll come to us. La ilaha illallah. Akhi, let alone from a religious standpoint, from the proofs of the kitab and the sunnah, that just doesn't make sense. And that is not a stance of a Muslim to his Muslim brother. When you see someone drowning in the water, crying for a lifesaver, you stand on shore and say, well, I'm... I'm not helping you. If you wanted my help, then you wouldn't have jumped into the water. La hawla wa la quwwata illa billah.